So we're going to take a look at the history behind JavaScript. And the reason why we want to do this is because we want an insight into how there is a lot of names for this one language. There's many names such as JavaScript, LiveScript, Mocha, and also you've got JScript and ECMAScript as well. Why do these names exist and what happened with the history of this language? Well, first of all, this language was created by a guy called Brendan Eich in 1995, and it was created in 10 days. Its development code name was Mocha, under the supervision of Netscape and Sun Microsystems. Netscape was partnered with Sun Microsystems that designed the Java language. Now, he ignored the boss's instructions to design the language based on Java. Instead, he chose Scheme and Self. These languages are not known to us today, but Brendan liked these languages because they were simple and easy to use. And that's why JavaScript is so easy to use today. When it was released, the language was called LiveScript. So Mocha was the development name. Now, when it's finally polished up and it's presented in the Netscape browser, it was called LiveScript. Then it was renamed to JavaScript as a joke to Sun Microsystems because the only part of the Java language they used was the name. Sadly, even though it's a joke, many people have been confused by Java and JavaScript being two very different languages. Or perhaps maybe Sun Microsystems wanted their mark on that language. Then Microsoft saw this and reverse engineered JavaScript. However, the name JavaScript and LiveScript was trademarked. So they called it JScript and integrated it into the IE3 browser in 1996. The problem is we have all these different browser vendors giving the same language different names. Also, the whole point to the web is that we create once and distribute everywhere. So we needed a standards body to make sure the standards are kept between the browser vendors, making it easy for us web developers. Once we write a script that will work in Netscape, it would also work in Internet Explorer 3 and so forth. So what they did was they went to the European Computer Manufacturer Association, hence the name ECMAScript. Since ES1 or ECMAScript version 1, there has been many revisions. The most notable is ES5 in 2009, and now in 2017 we have ES6, which adds additional features to this language. You can visit the ECMA website to find white papers on the standards of this language to understand how this language is supposed to work under the hood and what browser vendors should be adhering to. So hopefully now you can see how this language was designed by Self and Schema, and how it didn't actually incorporate anything from the Java language. However, they called it JavaScript, and then you have all these different names here for one language. But I want to stress that Mocha, LiveScript, JavaScript, and JScript are all the same language as well as ECMAScript. They're all referring to the same language, but because these companies own trademarks on those names, we have all of these different names for one language. And also the biggest and confusing one is the fact that people mistake JavaScript for Java. They are two completely different languages and they have a completely different syntax. And what do I mean by syntax? Well, it's the way in which a language is written. For example, you could say French has a syntax. They have certain symbols they put in their language. And English has a certain syntax. Well, programming languages have their own syntaxes, the way in which you write the language. And if you take a look at the way in which you write Java and the way you write JavaScript, they are very, very different in the way that they are written.